if you make it to holy a lot of people can't do that right and you got to let them know it's okay to be a human being right. you know and you got moments like, and what whatever and that's okay that's you know not that ah oh, blessed is everybody and yeah. He took my parking place, but I love him anyway. Fuck him! <laughs> Get out of my parking place, man! Hey everyone, so this time I have a very special talk to share with you, which I actually filmed a year ago when I was still practicing Aikido. I was in Switzerland, I was in an Aikido seminar, uh, which was led in part by a very known figure in the Aikido world, Robert Nado Sensei, was one of the few Aikido, Western Aikido people who has a seventh dan, seventh black, seventh degree black belt, which is acknowledged by the worldwide Aikido organization, Hombu Dojo. And uh, also, besides that, what is what made this talk very special because Robert Nado Sensei was is one of the few people who are actually alive up to this day who have met O Sensei and not only the founder of Aikido. So he, he was not only uh, learning from the uh, founder of Aikido, but he was actually buddies with the founder of Aikido. So he actually had talks, had tea together, they, they chatted for hours upon hours, and uh, he's one of the few people who has uh, a chance to share what really was behind the founder of Aikido, since he is so tied to so many legends and myths, and sometimes it's hard to know what's real, what's not. And it was a unique opportunity for me to just get to know uh, the person to know more about the person behind the myths. Besides that, what I really respect about uh, Robert Nadeau Sensei is that uh, in Aikido, oftentimes, from my experience, uh, many Aikido Sensei, especially higher rank, they really try to present the perfect image of that perfect human being. Uh, but Nadeau Sensei, he's really authentic. He, if he needs to swear, he swears. If he needs to smoke a cigarette, he does it. He's really, he's really about being himself and not trying to live to some, to some perfection image. And we talked about this during the talk. It's, it's one of our key topics that we, we spoke about. Also about some of the misunderstandings of, about what Aikido came to have. So very great topics in this video. And also you'll have the most exciting points, parts in the video. If you want the full talk, make sure you visit the podcast. You'll find the link in the comment section at the top of the comment section but i really encourage you to at least look through this video it's it's a unique interview it's a unique chance to get to see a different side of aikido and i hope you will enjoy it i presume we i'll give you the space to smoke the cigarette before we end or or do we do it this way this is me ah good and wine or coffee that's me perfect, perfect. they so don't like me then i tell them people i'm from the old school yeah I, they say, you smoke? Yes, I'm from the old school. And I eat donuts and chase young girls. Yeah. That's the old school. Well, that's, that's what I enjoyed so much uh, during the seminar where you were teaching that. And I'm, I'm curious whether you see it this way too, but many Aikido instructors try to be nicer than they regularly are. Than they really are. Right, right. And for me, every time you would say something which normally it wouldn't be said. I'm like, ah. Oh, I make an effort to add those in. Yeah. You know, we, we were with a couple of people who were discussing about that, and we, <laughs> that too. we thought, like, it may be even not just random. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that. Yeah. No, nice. before when I was on the workshop circuit, mm. uh, you know, not, not Aikido, but awareness, meditation, energy, uh, some people wanted somebody to wear white robes and do that. And I could have done that, you know, it's a, it's a show, but that's not me. So I did me. And a lot of people would come up later and say, thank you, because they didn't need the white robes. They needed somebody who drank coffee and, you know, whatever. So, but you're going to, they're going to hate you or love you or whatever. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. That's but true. also, I, I always thought that if you make it to, holy a lot of people can't do that. Right. And you got to let them know it's okay to be a human being. Right. You know, and you got moments like, and what, whatever, and that's okay. That's, you know, not that, ah, oh, blessed is everybody. And yeah. He took my parking place, but I love him anyway. Fuck him. <laughs> get out of my parking place, man.
<laughs> but that's again I feel from, from my perspective that's great because yeah. then people can realize sometimes well in general especially high ranked which I feel for me it's very important to feel the respect to mm. honor because otherwise it's hard to receive the teaching mm. but also if it, there's too much of a gap then uh, it feels like well yeah I will never be I like can, that. I or... can bow to him, but I'll never make it. Right. And that's so wrong. Mm. You got to have a chance of proceeding or developing or making it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, how was it with us since? Ah, well, see, that was a problem. <laughs> we, I have to bring that, it in somehow. That was a problem because he was so advanced. Right. Uh, that was like, wow. Uh <laughs> But he would say, you can do it too. This is for everybody and all of that. Probably most people didn't believe him right. because he was so, right. you know. Right. Uh, I, I, I believed him, <laughs> uh, but I knew it wasn't necessarily easy. Uh, but he would tell me it was easy, and I believed him. Doesn't mean I could do it or could catch how easy it was, but I didn't think he was lying to me. It's just, I always felt, I, I call that the stupidity factor. It's easy, but I'm so stupid, I can't catch it. But I believe him. It's right. easy. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of why I asked as well, if today I, I was the one who asked if, there's, if you feel there's going to be another Ostensi in the ah, future. God. You know, could be. <laughs> it could be. Um, and I think they'll just, boom, kind of be there. Uh, I don't know of anyone in training, mm. <laughs> you know. Um, so that's hard to to, to guess. Mm. And sometimes people ask of all the known teachers, you know, the I don't know what to call them, the second generation yeah. the, or the first generation. I don't know what to call them. Who was closest to O mm. Sensei? Mm. And we don't have an answer for that. Uh, the gap was so big mm. uh, that we couldn't use that kind of languaging, you know. So I could say, well, Koichi Tohei there for a while, he, his approach was good, but bing, and suddenly he doesn't have it there. And, well, what about so-and-so spent more time with those sensei? Yeah, but so-and-so is not the smartest guy in town. And so what does that mean? You know, because somebody spends time with somebody who's smart, they're going to be smart. You be the dumbest kid in town who happens to be spending time with the the, the brilliant whoever in town. Uh, that doesn't mean anything, but people wanted to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was that's what I was considering whether, and I had that impression somewhere that a lot of people tried to be like a sensei rather what you said, tried trying to be the best of themselves. Yeah. Well, for a lot of what I saw was. A lot of people trying to do a technique better. Uh, my sense of O-sensei was he was coming from some place where things happened. And yes, there was basics because he came up through jujitsu and, and the daito ryu. And yes, 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 basics. And he would show. Uh, and that's where Saito was good. What's the first basic according? Oh, the first basic was da da da. Mm. That's very nice. Mm. Now what? Mm. Uh, so yeah, th th there is that. But that wasn't O Sensei. Mm. You know, uh, yes, he would teach that because he's teaching an art. If he was a tennis teacher, he would have taught you how to hold the racket. Mm. He would have had to. Right. But it's not about that. Though. I don't think so. <laughs> you, you know. Or that's not the answer answer. Mm. Um, uh, so it's uh, it's tricky when you have that set and this other whole thing. Uh, but if I hold a racket better, will I come to nirvana or whatever the word is these <laughs> yeah, days? Yeah. Like, well, you know, questionable, you know. Uh, but if you can hit the ball a little, if I can hit the ball a little harder. Mm. Yeah, but that's you hitting the ball. Oh, since I said ball gets hit or whatever, mm. you know. Yeah. So it's like, it's tricky. It's, mm. it's tricky. <laughs> because 
when, when I jumped in just, just before we filmed, Patrick Sensi said, uh, you were talking that you, you feel that Sensi's teachings were misunderstood or are misunderstood. Ah. Well, maybe better to say you can dialogue it or read it at different levels. Now, what's the level of the perceiver? Uh, if he's just into technicals, then he's going to perceive the technicals. Uh, if he's uh, a Shintoist, a la Dariga, uh, Hikizuchi Sensei, then he's going to perceive it with a lot of Shinto thing. Uh, who's the perceiver? Um, and what are they going to hear there? What are they, what are they going to perceive? Um, and uh, following that, now that that came up, um, I, I'm not sure. No, I didn't see everybody and, and know <laughs> everybody else since they knew, but. Uh, but I don't know if I saw a lot of in in depth, heavy duty perceivers. Mm. But I, again, I have to say, I, sure. I, I don't know. I know he had some people he liked and all of that. Does that mean they were good perceivers? We just liked them. And talking to him later, I know he just liked some of them, and not, they were the the chosen few, or what's the phrase you like to use sometimes. Hair, heir apparent. Mm. I was talking to a couple of people about that yesterday. That when a great master instructor teaches, oftentimes we we send the we see the end game, we see the end result of the person's huge big process. And when I look at our sense, when I look at our sense's history, he went so deep and so far. And then, we, in Lithuania, in our country, we say the genius lies in the simple. And then he made it simple, but I guess ah, sometimes... He couldn't explain it really simple. Yeah. Me. No, I, well, so one thing about O-sensei, uh, he would talk a lot, mm. and he would use a lot of Shinto stuff yeah. as he understood it. Mm. Uh, and it was his experiences uh, that... In a certain, in a certain way, he made it hard for people. Yeah. But he had he admitted that to me. Mm. <laughs> also, he said, you know, I, I talk too much. Uh, don't get me going. I'm going to get going. And he would say that to me. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but that's he liked to get going. Right. Yeah, what are you going to say, man? Don't get going, man, yeah. because I'll I'll get confused. Right. You know, uh, give me enough wine here, and I'm going to get going. You, you know, <laughs> that's who I am. Uh -huh. But when when you yourself look at and so many years you spent living with Aikido, uh, and do right now at this day, how do you feel Aikido in the global sense as as a community? Do you, what do you, how do you feel it's going? Again, I think you have to understand that I probably right now look at it in two different pieces. One is, I think you're talking more dojo Aikido. Mm. And as a community of dojos. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I always liked the, uh, what I felt though since I said about Aikido was Aikido was understanding and being part of the creative form in which it created and being part of that. Uh, and not to confuse that, we're just dojoing. Mm. So yes, there are nice things in dojoing, and we get yeah. people to settle down and harmonize. But but there's this, I I, I don't know. I, I think we have to be clear because otherwise you're going to confuse Nikio with uh, the cre the creative force of creation. I don't know if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, and that's why I make that joke about. Oh, since I said Aikido can save the world or whatever. Yeah. He wasn't talking about Nikio, was he? Right. Nikio's going to save my school, hates <laughs> your school's Nikio. 
What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah. So, but you mentioned you feel clarity is missing in, in Aikido, in most Aikido teacher teachings. Ah, well, you know, Sensei was so advanced. What he's talking about isn't something people get to experience on a daily basis. The son of a gun. He'll say stuff like he was a normal human being, but you pinpoint him a little bit. Uh, like when he was a young kid, how old, eight years old, I don't know, on the beaches of uh, Ayabe where he's starting to do sumo, which he didn't want to do. He wasn't physical. His father made him. He wanted to stay home with mom, and and, and she was a poetry and philosophy and spiritual. He wanted to, and he was a sick kid. He knew when he got on the beach with the other kids, they were going to kick his ass, which they did. <laughs> he didn't want to be there. His father made him. I had the impression from what he said, uh, his, uh, his father made him go dragging and screaming. <laughs> was the impression I got. He didn't want to be there. He knew what was going to happen. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, but he caught on to something pretty soon. As I'm, I'm heading towards the point where I said to him, you were a child prodigy. He said, yeah. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, he'll say, uh, he's normal. And there's that too. You see this problem of, yeah, he's a normal human being, but he was sharp. He was a prodigy. And he caught on to, uh, because the other kids were kicking his butt, uh, he needed some help. So again, he's got this spiritual feeling. Uh, so he asks the spirits for help. Uh, like a kid, I kind of, I, I, I could relate to that because I was uh, in a car with my mother when I was a young kid, 12 or something. And we got into a car accident. We were way up in the mountains, deep in snow, nobody around. And there she is, boom, bleeding, you know. And I prayed. I'm a Catholic kid at the time. You know, please, somebody come help here, you, you know. So there he was, please help. So he told me, uh, he asked the spirits to come help him. He said when he first did it, it was more of an idea. And he said it didn't work. Then he caught on somehow or other that it was more an active, active uh, thing. And uh, at that time, he used uh, the air, earth, fire, water set uh, because there was, he was at the beach, so there was the water, the sun, the sand, and, the, and then the air. And he kind of used that as a metaphor. But because he did it with a sense of more active, ex experiential, it started to take shape. And very quick, he could hold his own. Now, everybody in town knows he's the sickest, scrawniest kid in town. They're shocked. He continues this before very long, and I don't know how long that was. Uh, he's top dog. He's kicking ass. And he continued with that. That, that was the beginning of understanding alchemy. <laughs> uh and so when I say, whoa, that's pretty fancy for a little kid, he said, uh, you know, with the sense of a, uh, there was a child prodigy, he had to admit, yes, yes, he, there was a bit of that there. <laughs> uh, so he always had the edge on us.